Hi, uh, very good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Bharat and uh, I will be telling you about how to assemble your telescope and collimate it to the best of its field. Now, what you see here is a Newtonian reflector telescope. Okay, so this Newtonian reflector is actually sitting on a Dobsonian mount. Right? The Dobsonian mount is very similar to that of a Altaizimuth mount. Right? Along with this, or a quite similar or a different, there are multiple types of mount which are available. You have equatorial mount, you have tripod, you have York mount, so you have various mounts. Now we have the computerized mounts, that is the go to mounts. I would not be going in detail about these types of mounts or its features. But today I would be just concentrating on how to assemble your telescope, okay, how to collimate it, how to point at an object, and how to focus it for the best of this telescope view. Now, uh, as you already have, the telescope mirror which I have chosen for today is the uh, 114 mm diameter. So, this is the primary mirror telescope, primary mirror of the telescope. Now, these mirrors are usually concave, okay. So, and it is 100% polished without any scratches or anything. Now, more, since the telescopes, the mirrors are being handled by the students, there will be scratches and anything, but for if you have purchased the mirror for the first time, there will not be any scratches at all on the surface. Now, I have the uh, more damaged one also, which has more scratches. Now, I will bring it very closer. So, if you see, there are many scratches on this. Now, this is not good to for the telescope. But the scratch-free ones like this, minor scratches here and there is fine. But if it is completely scratched like this, don't worry. You can actually remove the entire surface of the uh, coat, the, the, the coat of the mirror, and you can re-aluminize it. So this is the aluminizing process. Now, first thing is that. And second thing is today's requirement. So what we have done is, I have already taken, I have already calculated the focal length of this mirror and I have even drilled holes uh, where, and, where and when is required. So I have the holes cut and drilled for the eyepiece holder. I have the holes drilled for the primary mirror. This is where the primary mirror comes and this is where the secondary mirror comes. And this entire mount or the ODA as we call it, sits on this Dobsonian mount I had told earlier. Now, the hardware is required. Hardware is required are just a screwdriver and nose plier which is not mandatory and the other accessories required are your tripod, sorry, your the secondary mirror holder, the primary mirror holder, the eyepiece holder, the secondary mirror and apart from that nothing, I am sure you are going to be having everything along with you which is a part of the kit which I have already given. Now, to start with, what I insist is make sure that the tube is properly attached to the mount which has been bearing outside. Then once it is done, what you do is you take the eyepiece holder, remove the nut carefully, okay, you have two nuts which are holding it and yeah, you have to be careful and fix it to the holders or the slots which we have made and it will be something like this, right. Now, you can rotate it and turn it the way you want. Okay, and how do I align it and how do I fix it? These things come later. But make sure this is firmly fixed and bolted properly using the nut. Okay, so I am not going to use, I am not using any of the most sophisticated devices or sophisticated tools. I am using only simple screwdriver. Apart from that, I am 
actually not even I will not be even using the nose plier, right? And in in the center, in the middle, if you get any doubts, you can log in direct. You can actually uh, comment. I can also see comment uh, which is here. I can see those comments now. You tighten it completely. Tighten both the nuts. I think one nut fell. <laughs> can, I, can I get this? Yeah, I found that. Okay, so and uh, uh, meanwhile, where to buy the mirrors, where to buy the parts, and other things, I will be telling you later because I think that is what was one of the questions which was asked and apart from that uh, what are the other questions if there are any other questions my teammates uh, Aditya, Apurva and Manjunath are also online with us they would also be helping you to answer your queries but mostly I would be answering your queries live over here so now so you have Mirror or the eyepiece holder is fixed. So now you can turn and twist it based on your convenience. There will be a cap attached to it. Aditya, can you focus this? So now this is the cap which is there for your eyepiece holder. So you have to loosen this nut, remove. So you can move this in and out and to adjust the focus. Now, once this is done, what we will do is, we will take the secondary mirror. Now, you have to understand that whenever you are holding or handling the secondary mirror, never touch the coated part. Now, carefully unscrew the nut from your secondary mirror holder. Make sure the heads of the nuts are pointing at the same direction and at the below, from the center hole, insert the nut which was holding, which was attached to the secondary mirror and again using a very simple screw, screwdriver, tighten it and always make sure that don't tighten it completely. You always have a freedom to move the secondary mirror around. I repeat again, always have the freedom to move the secondary mirror around and never tighten it completely don't apply force it has to be just simple hand tightened okay and also have the flexibility to move the other three screws i repeat again gently or I, i'll show this again slowly and uh, i'll repeat the uh, instructions whatever i have done so what i will be doing is i am removing the secondary mirror completely okay so I am removing the secondary mirror. Now this is the secondary mirror, this is the secondary mirror holder. Now what I am doing is, I am asking you to have the heads pointing at one side and the heads of the nut which is holding the secondary mirror should also be pointing at the same side. And from the below what you do is you just align the nut slot and tighten the secondary mirror to the spider. So, or you can call it the spider or you can call the secondary mirror holder. Okay. So, again I repeat, has to be gently tightened and this and it should be able to move around completely like this. Got it. Then what you do is, we have already given the three nuts. Okay. Now, facing the mirror down, I repeat again, facing the mirror down or inside towards inside the telescope what you do is align you have already drilled the holes which is matching the mirror holder right so you have one two and three which is exactly about one third the circumference of the tube okay then and also from the center it is about 
uh, how many degrees? If I say equilateral triangle, so it is about 60, 60 and 60. So it's about equilateral triangle or very simple one third the circumference. So what you do is, you know, I'll rather come that side and show or I will just turn and I will show from here. So facing the primary mirror down and aligning the holes, you have one hole here, one hole here and one more hole here. Similarly, you have one to hand tighten it. Okay. Again, I am not using any, not even the screwdriver here. I am just hand tightening it and make sure you are not tightening it completely in such a way that the primary mirror ring, sorry, secondary mirror holder is sandwiched to one side of the thread. So never do that. You should always make sure that there is enough space and it is equally distant from the inner dia of the tube. And similar way, take the other two. Now, uh, be gentle and be careful. Okay. And apply this one too. Again, I am repeating again, don't over tighten it or don't keep it loose so that it shakes or it falls off. And the last one. The advantage of uh, building your own telescope is that you can change and modify or you can build your own telescope because principle of the telescope once if you understand or the concepts of the mirror once if you understand it is very easy for you to do any telescope or build any telescope got it now what i do is adi can you yes, bring me closer already got it you already got it oh, perfect now you see the secondary mirror holder is equally spaced from all the inner sides of the mirror and just I am making sure that it is tightened and it is not moving freely. Okay, That is very the first thing what you have to do. You have to make sure that it is equally spaced and you have to make sure that it is secured tightly. Okay? And again I am repeating it just because I am saying create screen and it will pull the secondary mirror in such a way that I can see the light entering from this region. And since the secondary mirror is, since the secondary mirror is at an angle of 45 degree, the light bends. So whatever image is being falling or whatever light is falling here, I should be able to see. So for better clarification, you should be now, okay, now you should be, okay, so, and I, when I look from here, I should be able to see the complete inner diameter of the tube. So, that means that the mirror is complete, perfectly aligned and what I do is, I tighten it, tighten the center mirror which is holding it, okay, the center line is holding the secondary mirror. And if it is not aligned properly, I what I do is I loosen one nut or tighten one nut in such a way, again hand tighten in such a way that I would I should be able to see the complete inner diameter of the mirror. So go a little bit back and forth and make sure that it is aligned properly. Okay? Now, once you have perfectly aligned, take your time, there is no hurry. So, once you have perfectly aligned, you should be able to see through, Aditya, can you focus to the secondary mirror inside? Okay? So, you should be able to see the complete inner ring in the reflection. Got it? Yes, 
I repeat again. So I'll take a little bit here. Okay. So, so when you see through it, you should be able to see whatever the complete inner diameter which is. Can you see? That's okay. So they should be able to figure it out. So once this is done, okay. So once this is done, so I will keep in all different angles and try to see whether it is perfectly sturdy or not. And I will also tighten again and tighten all the nuts and securing the secondary mirror, the secondary mirror cell, and the secondary mirror to the tube or the OTA. Now, what I do? Next thing is I take my primary mirror. Now, this is my primary mirror. Very similar to how we have drilled the hole to the secondary mirror. The primary mirror also has holes at one third the length of the circumference and also the tube also have respective holes at one third the tube length. Now, again, never touch the coated region of the telescope. What you have to do? Make sure you insert it completely and when you are doing this, always make sure you hold the mirror cell firmly. And again, if, they, if there are any small minor scratches on the primary mirror, don't bother. I repeat again, there are any small minor scratches on the primary mirror, don't bother. But if these scratches are like this, see, if you can compare both the mirrors, this is good, relatively good mirror and this is pretty bad. And the scratch is actually in the center and also on the corners and edges. So this is going to affect the image size pretty badly. Okay. So this is one I think Aditya you have to focus on. No, no, it's not good. Like it's good. So this is not good. This is good. Now what I do? I take this and again same way. I lock it. I'm going slowly, step by step, so that it is easy for you also to analyze and understand. Now, okay. Now, you see, it is. Here, in a similar way, it is equidistant, okay, from the center or the from the inner wall of the mirror. So the primary mirror holder, what you are seeing, is equidistant. So if I insert my finger on top on all the three sides, so it is equispaced, okay, it is equally spaced, and make sure, make sure it is firmly aligned to the tube. Now, don't bother about the collimation or don't bother about any of the aspects. Then, what you do is, you rest it down, okay, and try to see the image, what you are able to see from the eyepiece holder. If the secondary mirror is exactly at the center of the primary mirror, like how I am seeing here, or like how I am seeing through the video which we have shown earlier, then your mirror is actually collimated. But if it is not exactly at the center, then you have these three screws. You see these three screws? Okay. These three are the collimating screws. Now, by looking through the eyepiece holder, okay, by looking through the eyepiece holder, now what I want is Aditya try to see, try to show the viewers how exactly. I will try, I will defocus the, or I will not collimate it. Now, see if you can come a little bit closer. Okay. Can you? Now we will try, we will try, we will try and show. Okay. Can you see? Okay. Uh, 
Then we will see it. Okay, it's better. Now it's handheld. Now, here what you are seeing is you are seeing the live view uh, of the or the reflection of the primary mirror and the secondary mirror. Now, what you are seeing is you are seeing the reflection of the secondary mirror little bit towards the end of the primary mirror. Right? So, what you do is you try to change and view how exactly it is going to look. Now, if you see carefully, now the secondary mirror reflection is not at the center, but as and when I tighten one of the nut, see, as I tighten one of the nut, see, the reflection moves. Okay, see, can you see the reflection moving? And at one point, what I what you can do is see, I will hold it firmly. Now, it's quite challenging for Aditya also to focus it. Okay, Aditya, can you go back? Aditya, can you go back? What you have to do is by looking through the eyepiece holder, okay, collimate your collimate your primary mirror in such a way that the reflection is perfect. And when you are pointing at any light source, okay, I repeat again, when you are pointing at any light source, you should be able to see your own eyes reflection on the secondary mirror. And that secondary mirror should be at the center of the primary mirror. So let me draw this out here. So if this is the um, enlarging it, this is the eyepiece view that you are getting. So you should be able to see without any eyepiece, you should be able to see the secondary mirror holder's reflection exactly at the center of the view from the eyepiece and you should also be able to see your own eye here. Correct? So if the mirror, if the telescope is like this, then your telescope is perfectly aligned. Got it? Now, this is how it's going to be. Or if it is somewhere here like this, So it is not aligned. So you have to make sure use the three collimation nuts which are at the below. Okay. And make sure it is hand tight. It is not, you need not require any pliers or you need not require any tools to tighten it completely, but make sure it is secured tightly. Okay. And once if it once it is secured tightly and once it is collimated, your thing is done. Okay. Now, what you do is put the eyepiece in this corner, okay? So, I will rather come that side and I will show you even better. So, now, I will come to the eyepiece part of it. Now, this is your eyepiece. Now, we have, we have given 20 mm, but it comes with various other factors. You have 20 mm, you have 12 mm, you have 10 mm. You have 4 mm. So smaller the number, more the magnification. I repeat again, smaller the number, more the magnification. And when you are handling the eyepiece, be very careful. You should make sure that you are not threading it. You just have to remove the cover from both the ends of the eyepiece. Just pull it out. Don't thread it out. Okay. And this is a 20 mm eyepiece. Now, before securing the 20 mm eyepiece, there is a small nut over on the top here, which makes the eyepiece move front and back. And at the same time, oh, I am not able to find uh, this nut here. Okay. So, keep it like this. Okay. And, 
Okay. Uh, it's old, this it's huh? old one. So what we have here is an old version of the IPs folder. So which doesn't comes with a lock nut. But you have a separate lock nut or IPs uh, folder here. Can I have a new one? Can I have a separate a new IPs folder? Can I have a new IPs folder? So what you have to do is you just have to insert the IPs into the IPs folder and lock it okay in such a way that it doesn't fall out during the observation process okay so that is one thing which you have to understand carefully okay. now can i have the ips folder now that is one thing and second thing is uh, okay the ips folder is here now i will show this again now this is the newer version of the ips folder like I had told you earlier, this nut, which you can see, is the one which secures and holds the eyepiece. So, keep the eyepiece, insert the eyepiece inside and lock it tightly. So, no matter what, even with great force, I don't, if I have to pull it out, I can really pull it out. But once I lock it, this is completely secured inside. And then what I do is I loosen this nut and I can move the entire eyepiece holder in and out. Now this is a rack and pinion motion. Okay, so this will go in and out, helping you to focus it to any object. Now, for the beginners, what I suggest is start with the moon. I repeat again, start with the moon. Now, uh, for Budgeting purpose purely for the financial purposes, we were not able to provide the viewfinder. So viewfinder, if you have a viewfinder on the top, can I have a viewfinder? Uh, so if you have a viewfinder on the top, it will help you to easily locate the object in the sky. Now whatever uh, viewfinder is just like the gunshot or the crosshair which you find on the top of your uh, guns or your any spotting devices very simple now this or what you can have is you can have a reference like or you can make your own viewfinders for a simple one the, you can have a viewfinder which is something like this now these are the jugad viewfinders that you can find it okay the uh, the expensive ones, expensive viewfinders are something like this. It is a red dot finder. So usually this you will be able to get in Amazon on any of the hobby centers at uh, say 4,000 or 5,000 rupees, which gets mounted on top of it and screwed properly. And how you have collimated the secondary mirror and the primary mirror. Similarly, you have to collimate the viewfinder also. In and make sure that when the object that you are seeing through the viewfinder is exactly at the center of the iris. Got it? No, I don't have the viewfinder. I can't afford a viewfinder. What do I do? What are the other things that I should be able to do? Now, what you can do is you can get a screw or you see the hooks which holds the window lock together. You can put one here and one more here or you can use one reference stick on top something like this not so big one a relatively smaller one reference something like this and fix it okay and make sure don't worry don't bother about whether it is crooked whether it is straight or i'm not bothered about it take something like this even a cap will do and attach it to the top of the you. Then what you do is start with the moon. I repeat again, always start with the moon. Now, imagine the moon is towards my left at an angle of 45 degrees. So what I do is approximately keep the telescope pointing in the direction of the moon. Now, if I remove the eyepiece and if I move around, I should be able to see the reflection or the bright region or the <coughs> sorry or the uh, 
the view from the eyepiece should be able to lit completely, right? Then it, what I do is insert the eyepiece and move in such a way that the features or the surface features of the moon is clearly visible through your eyepiece. Got it? I repeat again. Imagine that or oh, in that region somewhere is the moon. Is. So what I do? Either I go towards the end of the uh, tube, the end of the telescope, make sure that the moon is somewhere in the top surface or touching the rim of the outer tube, okay, and come back without shaking the telescope. Come back and by viewing through this, move the telescope up or down and you will get the complete illumination of the moon here. And without the eyepiece, you will not be able to see the features of the moon. But after you put the eyepiece, okay, after you put the eyepiece and by looking through it, you should be able to see the reflection of the or the light from the moon. But to enhance its features, you have to just move it up and down. I repeat again, I had shown you this, not right, this section. So, by moving it up or down, you should be able to see the complete features. And once you are able to see the surface features of the moon properly, lock this. Okay? If you lock this, you will not be able to move the Back and pinion section to below or inside or outside. So this is moved. And to change it back, loosen this and then it starts moving up and down again. And once you see if it is correctly pointed for your eyesight, then lock it up. So this is how you should be able to align the telescope, collimate it and start using it. And for beginners, I would suggest you start with moon or any fixed light source which is relatively far off. So I think that's it. So I will I will go through the questions which has been uh, uh, commented. Now uh, we have pretty good sessions. Uh, it says hi hi hi. Okay, uh, where can I get? My mirror, I gave my mirror the image. Okay, so we will be we will be able to return your uh, mirrors shortly, and it will be uh, you will be we will be giving it to the school so that you can collect it, you can collect it, and you can take it out. Now it says please add this video to your YouTube channel later. Yes, whatever the videos that you are able to see will again go back to the YouTube channel for you guys to see it uh, again and again. Is Aditya sir <laughs> recording this? Yes, Aditya sir is recording this. And uh, sir, secondary mirror is loose and it was uh, just slightly touching and it is getting decollimate. Now, again I said, uh, if the secondary mirror is getting uh, not getting collimated, Tighten the three screws, okay, as much as possible, and make sure. Now I will remove and I will show this once again, okay. Now, uh, now. Now I will remove the primary mirror, uh, the secondary mirror completely and I will show you how it has to be done. Uh, the question was for primary mirror or for secondary mirror? Secondary mirror. Oh. Now again, uh, but always make sure that whenever you are Wherever you are securing the or placing the telescope, make sure you are keeping it away from the sunlight falling on the primary mirror. It is very dangerous. It can melt the portion of the 
light which is because it is concentrating all the intensity of the light to one point so you should be able to it should be able to burn the mirror no keep this aside i will not be able to i will not be requiring it anymore no now this is a properly secured aditya can you zoom in now now this is a completely properly secured secondary mirror now this is secured by the center nut over here which is tight enough and these three are your collimation screws now what you have to do is you have to tighten the center nut again i am saying hand tighten don't tighten it too much okay so see if i loosen even little bit i'm just loosening little bit i just rotated one circle and this is completely movable i can move this completely up front or clockwise or anti clockwise but at one end if i tighten it i i am not able to move it so now first make sure it is completely tightened and also make sure these three nuts which are here see 1 2 and 3 are equally tightened again hand tighten to make sure that it is sturdy and this is a secured secondary mirror holder and secondary mirror sir now let me go to the next question uh, i am facing the same problem so i see most of them having the problem with the secondary mirror if you still have the problems with the secondary mirror kindly uh, ping us directly on our website that is yangilometers.in uh, it the messages will directly come to me and if you are pinging using uh, your mobile or logging in to the website through your mobile the we have a facility wherein the whatsapp gets automatically connected to our website and we you can start chatting with us and uh, so that is one thing is any is anyone facing the same problem so if that is done okay okay but my mirror screw is very loose same thing you have to do is either change the screw go for a bigger screw slightly bigger one if it is too loose okay or you can actually use the same one tighten these three and it is done you don't have to bother about much okay but my primary mirror when can i come you can come any time and collect your primary mirror so that is not a problem okay and uh, we are not using uh, i think sanika is messaging it says that we are now using a 25 mm ip uh, provided by you it doesn't show details from for some planets like venus which ip is can use okay no that's what i said we have provided you the basic ips which is a 20 mm ips but 20 mm ips it's pretty good for you to chain look at the moon look at jupiter look at saturn look at orion nebula look at any of the bright magnitude objects very easily and venus even if you observe the venus also i'm sure you will not be able to see the features on the venus or if you are looking at mars you will not be able to see the polarized gaps or the mount mount olympus mars but you will be able to if you are looking at the venus you should be able to clearly see the crescent moon of the venus or the gibbous moon of the venus or whichever phase the venus is okay you and 20 mm is good enough for that okay so that is good and planets jupiter bands of the jupiter and the four moons of jupiter that is Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto can be easily seen. Got it? Orion Nebula can be easily seen. PD star cluster can be easily seen. The Messier object in Canis Major can be easily seen. So you are, you actually have lots of objects to view through this telescope. Don't forget that Galileo used just 15x telescopes. and 15x telescope and observed the entire sky and he was able to identify the faintest of the faintest objects yes we have the limitation of that kind of the quality of a sky but using this telescope it is pretty good enough for you to identify or view different objects just start practicing it by starting from moon from moon start practicing and slowly 
in the early morning around 4 o'clock or so on the eastern sky you will be able to see Mars, Jupiter and Saturn all the three planets in the western sky in the eastern sky you should be able to see all the three from the same telescope now I'll go to the next question now uh, which IPs can I use for this purpose do I have it yes uh, earlier we used to provide both 1 mm as well as 20 mm but uh, again uh, constraints financial constraints we are now able to provide only 20 mm we will make sure you can easily buy the uh, uh, eyepieces I would not suggest you to buy a 4 mm or uh, any higher magnification one because every telescope comes with a resolution uh, a limit okay beyond which or the part we call the resolving power beyond which it will not be able to magnify it and if you start trying to magnify it even more than its limit the image will start getting blurred so you can easily go for 10x or 12, sorry 10mm or 12mm 10mm 12mm or even 4mm up to 4mm it's pretty good for this telescope but if someone says that no 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 use 2mm use any 1mm kind of a telescope or you then just don't believe them because the images that you will be seeing through that eyepiece will be very faint you will not be able to observe much details or it will be blurred completely and but now this is a telescope which comes with a fixed field of view usually the standard field of view of these eyepieces is 52 degrees 52 degree is the standard field of view but you get specialized uh, eyepieces which have wider field of view don't buy those things as of now use this push it to its limit you can probably go for 10 mm okay you have 20 mm but you can go for 10 mm or 12 mm observe 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 and get well versed with the telescope and later on you can probably start investing it because the eyepieces are relatively expensive when compared to the telescopes and like your primary mirror and secondary mirror you can use whichever eyepieces that you have to any telescope not just because the telescope the eye, this eyepiece comes with this telescope it is not fixed that you have to use this eyepiece only to this telescope you can use any eyepiece to any telescope for that matter but make sure it is very much within the resolving power now let me go back to the next question uh, Ma'am, is it normal to see the secondary mirror holder when you zoom through the telescope? Like I said, without the eyepiece, this is how it looks. I repeat again, this is how it looks. If this is exactly equidistant from the corners of the thing, and you, if you are able to see your own eyes reflection at the center of the secondary mirror, it is perfectly good. It's perfectly in good condition. So, don't bother much using screwdriver and unscrewing it slowly mm, ok then the, the Mercedes Benz thingy yes <laughs> the Mercedes Benz thingy is called as the uh, secondary mirror holder you know, that's a good one now ok thank you uh, we have ok which eyepiece do you suggest for us to watch Venus with good details 10mm 10 mm eyepiece or 12 mm eyepiece is good enough for you to watch Venus. Uh, yes, 25 mm eyepiece. We have 25 mm eyepiece. Okay, ma'am, 12 mm eyepiece is fine. It is fine. 12 mm eyepiece is perfectly fine. Okay. Then he says he removed the lenses like he had shown me, but what should I shouldn't do? Okay, now I will show you the worst case scenario also. Some kids try to unscrew this, okay, and if, if you have, I'll bring it much closer to the, no, no, if you see this, okay, if I have unscrewed it completely and if this thing is popping out, 
be very careful very gentle don't touch it with your hand slowly slightly hold it at the rim like this but this is the worst case scenario i am repeating again make sure it is exactly at the center like this okay aditya can you focus it down okay slowly okay focus it okay keep it at the center and making sure that is exactly at the same place lock it back and when you are locking it always keep a view on the and tighten it completely and this is how you should be able to see the image got it so the lens which is at the center should be at the center and should be properly secured and make sure you don't touch this portion i repeat again don't touch the lens portion or if there are any scratches on it don't use any cloth to wipe it out okay make sure you use the same cloth which has been given for you to clean the camera lenses but i suggest if you are uncertain don't even bother to clean okay so that is done no uh, but but i really don't see any scratches on my uh, ips lens that's perfectly fine malini if if you don't see any scratches on your ips lens your ips lens is perfectly fine okay then uh but i really don't see any scratches on my ips so it is perfectly fine okay then i got my telescope i had smudges on the ips again i repeat just take a cotton make sure that cotton is clean enough and slowly clean the top surface not applying too much of a pressure okay just take a cotton and slowly clean it but even in spite of having those smudges if you are you are uh, image forming image forming on this on object which you are seeing through this shouldn't be hampered okay but if that is the case just take a cloth if it is beyond the repair of just take a cloth clean it and you should be able to see the lens which is clean or good enough to view okay any other questions i need help sir uh, sir we yes if my mom is good enough can we use cloth provided with the specs to clean the lens yes kishan you can use uh, the cloth which is provided by the at the optical uh, tells optical things okay but again i am showing i am repeatedly telling again don't apply too much pressure okay or what you can do is i try i try showing it with this okay take the cloth fold it like this make it a corner blow a little bit and slowly move it okay and make sure you gently rub the scrubs out of it again i am telling it this is the last option that you will be able to do if you are uncertain get it to us we will be able to do it or take it to any spectacle shop they should be able to clean it and give it to you crisp and clear got it so it's better i suggest take it to a near closest optical shop okay they are able to they should be able to solve your problem enough any other questions any other questions no questions since there no questions okay i think that's good enough how to observe the planet ha okay now uh, there is uh, aditya sir wants me to show you how to observe the planet now very simply how you observe the moon try to change the orientation and re repoint it to the moon again try to move the telescope here and there realign it to the moon so if you are doing it continuously and when you are looking through the uh, outer uh, portion of the tube you should be able to get an approximate position at what point of the uh, object in the rim or around the reference position 
you should be able to see the view. Now slowly try to look at the brighter objects or the uh, farthest light source on the ground. Okay, go to your terrace, make sure this is on a perfect platform and I suggest better sit down and always make sure that the object is above 30 degrees. Don't look, don't search for the object which is below 30 degrees or closer to horizon. Closer to horizon, even if the object is very bright enough like that of the moon, okay, which is equal about 0.5 angular size and diameter, okay, what happens is because of the turbulence and the atmospheric uh, heat, the image that we are seeing through the eyepiece starts shimmering like your mirage effect or like you see the hot tar on the ground. So, that is all it is. Now, any other things which I have to cover? No, I have one more question here. Okay. Oh, yeah. How to clean the mirror? Never try to clean the mirror. Don't try to clean the mirror. Get the mirror. Now, uh, that's what I said. If there are scratches on the mirror or anything, don't bother much. Like I said, if the scratches are like this, if the mirror is completely worn off or see, can you see, I am taking it closer. Now, if the mirror is something something like this, okay, what we have to do is we have to completely re alumnize remove the alumnized region, coated region and re alumnize it, get it, we will be able to help you and do it. But if there are small minor scratches or if there are dust on this, just blow the blow the air on top surface, you should be able to do or take a distilled water, I repeat again, take a distilled water and slightly pour it, not physically in contact with it, but just pour the water on top of it, it should be able to take all the dust on it, but I repeat again, don't rub, physically rub the surface of the mirror and leave it in this position for a while so that all the water comes or down and not settling anything on the surface and fix it back. It should be perfectly fine. Then any other questions? How to, now I have again uh, one more question saying how to clean it. Don't, don't clean it. I repeat again, don't touch the primary mirror or the secondary mirror, especially the coated region of it. And Yes, what if, is there any dust on the primary and secondary mirror? Vamshi, same thing applies to Vamshi too. Uh, we are not, where, sir, we should not thread the eyepiece, right? Shivani, you can uh, tighten the eyepiece. I don't see there should be any problem in tightening the eyepiece. You make sure that it is secure to the eyepiece holder, okay? Uh, any other questions? Any other things which I oh, forgot to align? Okay. If you are keeping it somewhere, how to avoid dust settling on the mirror? Oh, perfect. Now, uh, keeping it and always make sure this is the position in which the telescope is aligned. Cover something on top of it. Make sure that it is and uh, whichever position, either in this position or in this position doesn't matter. But make sure you cover the open end of the tube okay and always remove the eyepiece keep it separately and cover it so this is how you need to keep it and keep it away from the sunlight make sure that the sunlight doesn't enter the even if you're keeping it open-ended make sure that the cover the light is not entering from the open-ended tube got it that's it eyepiece Sorry, eyepiece. Okay, then after removing the eyepiece, uh, I don't know where I put the eyepiece. Oops, yes. Okay, after removing the eyepiece, secure back the cover like this, and your eyepiece is secure. So you can keep it, carrying it below surface, below, below, below the mirror. Below yeah. the mirror, there is none. So you need not, you need not bother about it because. It is already facing below and this part, the dust or insect will not enter through. And whenever you are carrying the telescope out, first thing what you have to do is you have to check the collimation again. Always carry a simple screwdriver when, whenever you are taking the telescope out and collimate it again. The 
when even if you take the telescope out in a vehicle or even if you are physically carrying it and moving it okay there are chances of the collimation to alter so make sure you collimate it fine perfectly then you would to the telescope or point at any object any other questions i try to align it with the moon but i wasn't able to can you please repeat in short how to align it? okay now bata okay uh, we have just two more minutes i will be able to see okay it will be there in youtube forever so you can see again if this is the moon so for example now i will point now if this is the moon okay so i will write again in red if this is the moon so what i do is i will first make sure that the telescope is approximately pointing to the moon then if if it is even if it is approximately pointed without the eye piece if i move the telescope up and down i should be able to see the illumination of the moon illumination of the moonlight through the eye piece holder okay make sure if it is make sure you move it in such a way that the illumination is at the maximum then take the eye piece okay fix it secure the eye piece then loosen the eye piece holder and move it front and back and lock it you should be able to see the features of the moon very clearly right any other questions how to prevent the dust particles from settling on the mirror malini ram kumar just cover it cover the surface of the telescope with a neat cloth okay uh okay sir how do we cover the telescope with the cloth very simple take the cloth now this is a cloth okay what do i do just cover it like this not that is very simple it can not be white cover black cover pink cloth doesn't matter just make sure that the cloth is not torn just cover it up like this okay and take a rubber band and put it secure it make sure it doesn't fly off for the wind okay so if i lose some part in between why if i lose some part mm -hmm. what i can do so if you lose some part or you either you can look for a similar part in uh, uh, google or you can call us we should be able to get we have couple of uh, materials with us as of now we are able to order few but uh, looking at the thanks to corona all the shipments are pretty tight and we are not able to import anything but yes if we have whatever parts that we have with us we should be able to help you and provide you the things okay now thank you so much for coming online watching spending all your time in uh, coming online and uh, being an active participant in participant to it i thank aditya for doing all these arrangements apurva and manju for helping and coordinating with you guys making sure that you are aware of the things and yes if you have any further queries we are always here thank you so much for your time thank you so much for your cooperation hope make sure you have clear skies and happy observing thank you so much bye bye Hello